314 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book, Bet Local. This team bangs. This team, I don't know if you're in the shock. Get, get closer to me. Get closer to me. Let's get no, sensual. We're in here. We're Let's in get here. sensual in this motherfucker. How are you feeling, Abe? I mean, this team, what a game. Uh, we're doing the same thing as last year. Do you feel like? No, 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 no we're not. We're not. Because, because, no, we're I'm not. Fine. I'm fine. Like, I'm, no, we're, we're, only, we're, fine not we're not over because yeah. last year they yeah. didn't hit any home runs. They were the Bloop Jays. They were the Bloop Jays last year. And this is feels a little bit different. Springer home run, Vladdy to the fucking sun. Having Vigio home. Oh run. my god, the two v one home run, the two v one resurgence. We have never been more correct about something. I know it's early. Listen, I know it's early. Listen, Mike Wilner style. I know it's early, but that two v one home run made me feel things I haven't. Like that ball was fucking <laughs> shot on it. And what what do you do? Home run, two walks, two walks, two walks, and home run. That's why you have the best nine hole hitter in baseball on your team. Well, dude, that today was, was special because as soon as you give up the Yandy Diaz home run to start the game, which was fine though, it was a solo shot, right? 100% yeah. solo shots don't kill you, but you finally go into a season. We talk about this team, okay, they're not that bad for five, four months. And then the first batter we see when we're playing defense, home run. <laughs> it's a home run. I will say though, like, that was the first game in a while, and I, I could be stock corrected on this, but that was the first game in a while where I was like, oh, my God, this team's hitting home runs. Like, I, what? Like when did that happen last year? You, oh, they had three hits at one point. All three were home, home runs. runs. Yes. It's 2021 Blue Jays. Who fucking cares about hitting singles if you're just going to score a single, fuck man? A single. Fuck a single. That, today's game, and <laughs> it made me feel things, man. That Vladdy home run, I got to give my flowers. We've been Vladdy haters, obviously, one one. The, one war last year. The hating of Vladdy has always been because we know he's, he's the best that. hitter he's that. to ever grace uh, everything. Curtis, we're still recording over here. We're good. Oh, Curtis, Curtis behind the camera. Yeah. By the way, before we go into the game fully, let's go. Let's talk about that sports interaction event. Thank you to everyone that showed up. It was literally packed. Like it was uh, the layout of the bar was it was a small bar. Oh, it was a small bar. It was like a little <laughs> bit of a mall, but yes. I will say though, Avery's always under this impression that no one's gonna show up to shit that we do. That's just how that's just how and always be. Like there was people there uh that I weren't expecting to be there. Like there was like listeners that were tweeting us. I think they're sometimes just fucking with us, but uh <laughs> that was uh it, it it was surreal, man. And that's going to show you the gate 14 that hits the uh, sports interaction parlay. Too. Yes, we get the sports interaction parlay plus a thousand Bobachet bases, Springer bases, Blue Jays money line, free as air. Um that game was honestly, Avery, it was uh it made me feel, like I said, it made me feel things. It was just the home runs. By the way, five straight opening day wins. Five the straight on baseball. The greatest opening day baseball team to ever grace this earth is the Toronto Blue Jays. Five in a row. Longest active opening day win streak yep. in baseball. Yep. David Schneider's dad tweeted at me after I tweeted. You should have dunked on him. I hate our guy, though. Yeah. He is our guy. <laughs> but he's, like, he's, like, that's guy. A, he's like, that's a mush if I've ever it seen It was a one. mush. It was not a mush. I'm just tweeting stats. You're immune to the mush, though. You are not a mush guy. I'm the mush guy. True. I, yes. I, I didn't tweet that. No. Is If you have a brain bets, that's not me. Yes. Uh, everything else, that's not me. I was just tweeting out stats. I was I was on my uh, on my little uh, behind-the-scenes yes. action there. Let's address the elephant in the room. Obviously, I tweeted about it earlier. Uh, Joe Siddle, we were denied access from Sportsnet to get Joe Siddle on the podcast. And I know people are thinking I'm probably going to rip into him this and that, this and that, whatever. But... Uh, for one, it's not his problem. It's not his problem. So everyone that's tweeting at him, I know there's a lot of people in there in, in my mentions tweeting at him. Uh, it's not his fault. It's Sportsnet. Um, and I'm not. I, there's no will towards Sportsnet. At the end of the day, we're a competitor of theirs. We're an independent podcast that's grinding for listens, grinding for views, like they are. I know people are expecting me to rip into Sportsnet. I just simply can't do it. Uh, I respect what they do. They own the team that we cover, so it'd be very fucking stupid <laughs> for us to rip into the Toronto to, into, into Rogers yeah. Sports. It was the shy thing, I think. It was yeah. the shy thing that I was I spearheaded. Um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, like I was just protecting our brand, and that's like what I was doing. I know some listeners are gonna be mad we won't be able to get Joe still on the podcast, but no disrespect to Joe, but no, we, we wanted we, Joe on. We wanted Joe on. At the end of the day, though, we're gonna go or not go without him. We're gonna get, we're gonna get the numbers we get and all type of that. I just wanted to get Joe Siddle from a fan perspective instead of like the button up version of the shows that he has been on. But um, there's no disrespect towards Sportsnet, no disrespect towards Joe Siddle. He just got we got denied from it, and I know people are gonna probably get mad about big, that. Big media fucked us. The big media fucked us, and I, and honestly, man, Avery, that's more of like an a testament to us. It means we're doing something right. Like they see us in the rear view. 
they see what we're doing yeah. nipping out there yeah they see us nipping there and uh <laughs> at the end of the day man we're just covering the team we fucking love man and today it kind of went it kind of showed i today, mean today was the most fun i'd had watching baseball in, in a very long in time very long i had time. a very long time but you got to think man the last time we watched jose barrios pitch he got pulled in the fourth <laughs> in the third inning of a wild card game that the team lost. So and he was pitching just as well. And today. he was pitching just as well. Classic joke. You can I, make, say, uh, you should pull I know you and I talked about like the potential uh, regression of La Machina. And uh, man, did he just fucking dunk on the haters. He, uh, besides that, the home run he gave up. Yeah. He was absolutely insane today. I know he gave up so the second. The, what was it? The sixth inning where he went. Uh, double. So it was double. George Springer needed to catch that ball. Yeah. The bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The ball lands like not even at the base of the wall. It's still on the track. Yes. Um. So that sucked. George Springer should have caught it. He should have caught that. That was a weird play. And then he went hero mode to try and catch it again. It was back to back. That's ball though. When you make an air, when you make a mistake in baseball, the ball always goes back to you. And you try and be a hero. Yeah. And you try to be a hero. He tried to be a hero, but he made up for it with that home run. So I will never chirp George Springer. But the fact that he got out of it, because what was it? First and second after he walked. No outs. No outs. No outs. And we get out of it with only one more yes. run, right? So that was great. That's, just but that's like, what this offense is going to have to do every end of the day. Like, I, I mean, it, it, if you get in jams like that, if you can rely on the offense to get out of it, it kind of makes the pitcher at ease a little bit more knowing that this team put up six runs. You can give up a one spot or a two spot or anything along those lines. So Just limited, limiting damage at any point. Yes, and, and, and Jose Barrios was insane today. I mean, backed up that opening day start he had in 2022 which was terrible i mean one out five earned runs and as, as soon as we saw the yandy diaz home run it's like the yandy uh, diaz home run made me a little bit sketched out but uh and now how many innings was that in a row? it was 12 innings we hadn't seen the jay school yeah run i mean we went nine from, up we went nine up nine and down yeah but i will say man jose barrios tip my cap what a fucking appearance we gotta tip our cap to other guys too i mean trevor richards out of the pen dynamite the yeah. silver fox because he nate he, pearson who we thought was dead after that Phillies appearance, we talked about, like, when do we give up on Nate Pearson? And he just fucking shoved against the Rays. 98 on the black. He was looking incredible. So still, still hate his new glove. Still hate That's his new okay. glove. I'm not a fan of the new glove either. But he had a, he doesn't have a neck beard as well. But neck beard Nate, as the kids say. Virgin <laughs> Nate. Uh, mono Nate. Mono Nate. But he'll be okay. He'll be okay. Nate Pearson. Like if we can use Nate in that situation every single time where the game to gain kind of his is, confidence as well. 100%. Yeah. Because he was there was a stretch last year where he was very good. He was... Insane. I mean, last year, if you ig ignore like two or three appearances, he gave up like two runs in like 12 innings. Like he was good. Do do I think that maybe Wes Parsons should have closed that game? Yes. For confidence <laughs> reasons? Yes. Because the Rays were kind of milking it, not milking it, like throwing the towel in. But um, I don't think it makes sense because not a lot of lefties in that lineup. Um, they might not use Tim Meza as often. Yeah. So I don't think that's. It was a horrible place. To Nate Pearson was uh, absurd, but that lineup today, I mean, everyone's on it. Let's, let's go through. Let's go through it. Uh, George Springer. No, never mind. Do you want it? You want a drink? Alto's doing the drink. Alto's here. doing the drink thing, the uh, Keegan Matheson special. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Throw it, throw it to Avery. Throw it to Avery. How am I supposed to catch? No, I'm good. No beers for me right now. Avery's got to edit this podcast off. That was bad on me. That was bad. But George Springer. Did what we expected him to do. Like all spring, he was pull side homers, yeah, pull side doubles, and George Springer looked incredible in the spring. And that first, kind of, the first at bat was really good. He didn't hit it hard. It got yes. off the end of the batter uh, on the hands. That was a nice catch. He, he, he stayed on yeah. it as well. He only hit it eighty, so you're not going to get many hits. Yeah, their liners, yes, like that, unless they're perfectly placed at the middle. I thought he was really good. And yes. then the lineup, how they did it, I, I like <laughs> the two hole. See, I would almost change. I would have gone. Bo, Vladdy, Springer, probably without it is because Bo is going to slap and get on. He's not going to do the extra. Yeah, bit. Sacrificed power this year. 100%. You could tell. Yeah. That's just who he is. Yeah. Now, and I think I'd almost use him to get on base more than Springer. And Springer, we want him to strike out. We want Vlad to strike out and we want them to hit for power. So yes. I almost flipped that, but it worked out perfectly with this lineup, man. It made me feel things. I mean, 2B1 out of a nine hole. It's, uh, I know we make the joke, shout out True RGM. We make the joke about the, uh, <laughs> The double leadoff stuff, but he was that guy today. And the thing about Calvin Biggio is, and which Bassett alluded to tons of times when he talks to us, is he is a impossible at bat. Like yeah. he doesn't go out of his zone to swing at pitches. And Calvin Biggio was that guy today. I mean, two walks, like we mentioned, a home run pull side, which we yeah. haven't seen in fucking years at the Toronto Blue Jays, it feels like. <laughs> he, and I think he's good at the pull side bomb. Yeah. Him and Barsho, him and Barsho are good at pull side bombs. But who, like, 
who impressed you the most today in that lineup that made a significant bounce back compared to last year? Uh, Alejandro Kirk looked good too. We even talked about Thick Jesus. Kind of got stolen on a little bit behind the plate, which is kind of something. He, he got one, so he yeah. was fifty percent, fifty percent catching yeah. runners. Yeah, yeah. That might be a Barrios thing too. I would, yes, Barrios was kind of we're in the middle play. of getting drunk and watching the game, so you're not really looking at how quick he is to the plate. Yeah, when I was in that uh, area, so we can go back and look at that tomorrow. Maybe uh, Kirk was really good because he takes a. 0-1 pitch, a slider, middle, middle that you have to hit yes. for him to RBI single up the middle. That's it what, was. It's the liners that get over past the shortstop in the second baseman right in that area is where Kirk is really, really good. Yeah. So I it, think that play was awesome. It was just good. was awesome. Yeah. Vladdy striking out runners on first and second. Him striking out uh, with no outs instead of grounding into a double play is the happiest I could have that ever That sounds been. like participation trophy shit, but it really, like, if he if he Bo, Bo hit the double right after, yes, did he not? Yes, but okay, Bo, Bo, Bo double. Bo, no, he he pulled this one because the two runners scored first and second. Okay, Vladdy struck out, and I'm pretty sure Bo hit the double down the left field line that scored both of them. You, Bo Bichette's so good, like, I, but that's that's the thing. If you don't ground and do a double, play, it's two outs versus one. Yeah, strike out, man, for the love of it God. It sounds crazy. We're saying this like we we prefer our generational hitter to strike out, but that's what you get from. Guys that are power yeah. guys. So Vladdy's first for... at bat when he goes fastball down and away that he pounds into the ground at 108 and Yandy Diaz is playing shifted in between yes. first and second. I was just thinking to myself, we're doing this thing again. Well, yeah, the, the exit pitch, be a little merchant. Yeah, yeah. Pitch, pitch swinging again. If, yeah, you're going to get ex Woba out the ass if you're hitting the ball 110 every single time. But you just look at quality of contact. It wasn't great. So Vladdy hitting the home run and striking out made me as happy as I could. I'm not going to react, man, but like even some of the approaches. And let's give our flowers. Let's give our flowers to fucking offensive coordinator. Yeah. Johnny Baseball. Johnny Baseball. Johnny Baseball. Johnny Baseball. And, and give him the fucking Turtle Beach headset. <laughs> Donnie Baseball play card, too, is averaging eight runs a game when he is at the helm. I don't even know what Guillermo Martinez is doing. They showed him on the bench, and he's just like, a fan. Like yeah, he's I, literally just I a said, fan. I said Guillermo streaming the game with us. Yeah, pretty he's much. watching the Gate 14 <laughs> live stream. I will say, man, like Donnie Baseball, and I Keegan Matson talked about it with us. Like having it funnel through one guy instead of having multiple voices in your ear, it's crazy they took a year to figure that out. <laughs> but like Donnie Baseball having the top of the food chain where it's like you listen to me and what every information that comes through me goes to you guys where we're not having multiple voices, it makes sense. And Again, it's one fucking game, but like that, that was the race. That's the race ace. I mean, Shay McClanahan obviously is going to yes. be the ace, but Shay McClanahan's not on the team. Right he's now. not on the team. He's, he's not. So he's not on the team. Exactly and led. and the thing is, the trop curse. Like that's kind of what we had going into it. You tweeted about almost twenty games under five hundred the last decade. twenty games under five hundred at the trop. So uh, just seeing this offense kind of bang, it's like fuck, man. I, I I see the vision that Ross Atkins has. I'm not a Ross Atkins show. Yeah, everyone on my Twitter well, fucking mentions. Well, let's talk. Turner wasn't great today. Turner was bad. <laughs> not today. IKF was bad. Today. IKF was bad. IKF in the big, the only moment where IKF had to come through was the ground ball to third base with runners on first and second. And he double play. Could have called. Could have had the the ball was skull fuck. Yeah, it was hit, hit it off his chest, but he makes the play at first yeah. base. The IKF play he needed to make at third base he made today. Yes. So uh, that was launched at him though. That was that was a. High exit velo ball at IKF that he made a really good play on on a slow runner, albeit yeah. obviously, but um, he made he made the play like yeah. that could have easily eaten Santiago Espinola. It's just at the end of the day, man. Like we could talk about this, talk about that, like negative, positive. It's just good to have fucking ball back. Like yeah. watching actual regular season meaningful baseball on the television, us streaming it, which I miss so much. Like being with the people, uh, is just I was great. The streams because I know how much it's gonna take, but then you get behind it, and you're just and you. It's just like what? it's just like I can't even really fathom that people are watching the game and then they have on our, us on their laptop watching yeah. the fucking Blue Jays play baseball. It, it's crazy. So uh, we appreciate all you guys doing that. But oh, Bert Goal. Tyler Bertuzzi, goat man, seventeen talks for two Tyler Burt. Bert, but uh, I love, I love this Toronto Blue Jays team, man. I, I do. That was I, an awesome start to the year. It for was. People who were down on the last stage. year, but and we think at least he's gonna win a game tonight. No. Um. Oh, Yankees won. Fuck our Yankees. Um. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, last year, last year they won that game and started out one and zero with a kind of a Mickey Mouse performance. Like they, they had no business winning that. Alec Manoa walked a million guys. Sure. Miles, by the way, credit to Johnny Staff, 10-8 ERA in opening day. Proved it today. He stinks. Um, 
it was like a non-satisfaction win they had last year. So seeing them actually win a ball game by actually playing ball and not relying on their team being dog shit kind of helped. It was sick <laughs> to see. I I love today. Every <laughs> today is why you watch I, baseball and you cheer for a team. We're on pace for 162 and out. I mean, I'll, I'll just say it, but I will say tomorrow having our guy, by the way, to disclose personal info to the people, we were texting Bassett. He texted us happy opening yeah, day. I said, I said, let's fucking, let's go, fucking go. Let's have let's have a good year. Bassett loves the hype video that we post uh, with one more time. By the way, great track. We haven't talked about that. No, we, we, we kind of uh, hinted at it one more time. Kurt, Curtis wanted uh, all I do is win, which is like fucking... <laughs> Literally, the words is not sound. like a song you play like a grade eight dance. Uh, but <laughs> you wanted a bar mitzvah song. But all, but uh, we love Curtis. <laughs> but I, I didn't tell you this. So Swan, he individually texted me. He sent me a video of him like blasting tracks in his car, drinking Duncan. Like I yeah. won't be there, but I'll be there like at the trop. Uh, I showed him the song, and he's like, "This is fucking incredible." So shout out Swan. He hopefully you're doing okay, but. This is how you are going to have to win baseball games until you get Romano and Swanee back. Yeah. You're going to have to don't, win. Don't let high leverage guys have to throw. Exactly. That's the best thing. And you're going to have to win by committee. Like, let's blow Nate's arm out this year because we throw them so often because <laughs> yeah. they're up by six. By a million. Yeah. yeah. It's just at the end of the day, man, you're going to have to win these games by committee until your big dog, Sw Romano, who in my opinion is one of the best clothing pitchers in baseball, comes into the game. And Swanee, who is a great setup guy, he was insane last year, so the most things of his career. That's how you're going to have to win baseball games right now until those dudes get back. And this is what this team did today, and I hope they can do it tomorrow because that was incredible to watch. We will be streaming this tomorrow, by the way, on the Gate 14 YouTube. Um, yep. But uh, it's going to be good to be back Friday beer stream tomorrow. Yeah. That's that's, that's going to be that's seen. Pretty much all I got today. A nice little quick one. It was a nice little quick podcast, but um, this Blue Jays team, I will say, I know I still have people in my comments, by the way, like, my my Twitter mentions are crazier than yours. Yeah, my Twitter mentions are fine. You're, you're, you're kind of fine. I, I get people telling me like, "Oh, you're excited about this." Like, just shut the fuck. Like, just let us enjoy a win. Like, yeah. just let us enjoy a fucking win. Um, break breakaway Max Domi. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyways, look at the shots in this. Game. Yeah, this shots insane. Twenty three to nine. Oh no, oh, no. they're going the other but, way. Uh, yeah, it's just it's great to talk Blue Jays ball again. Meaningful ball. Yeah. On um, thank you for everyone that has kind of tuned in and stayed. Through with us towards the entire offseason because it's been like the numbers the grind. Been, the numbers have been insane, but this is the caring about baseball in the offseason makes you crazy. Like, crazy. Oh, crazy like oh, shit. Yeah. Um, and it helped with having guys like Bassett, Ernie, all those guys come on for sure. But uh uh thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this is the first gate 14 podcast from all the way to October, where we'll be talking about meaningful baseball, which still gives me chills to this day to think about. Um, I'm excited for that home opener. Um, thank you guys. Thank you to Sports and Rockin yeah. for hosting that event. It was the most professional thing I've ever been a part of. Like that mic we had, it's same as this, but it's you, like the, um, you screaming into that mic was the clearest. I know, but I didn't thing. realize how good that mic was <laughs> until I'm hearing like the clips and I'm like, I am legitimately screaming in this. I'm murdering someone's eardrums, but um, I appreciate Sports Interaction for taking a chance on us, obviously, and uh, trusting the brand. And they told us, they came up to us after and they said we broke all their record numbers for streams and, uh, for views and all their stuff. So we appreciate yeah. that. It wouldn't that be, wouldn't be done without the people. It wouldn't be done without the, the people. So uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bassett Hound Dog Bump Day Friday beer stream, the first of 2024. We will be buzzing 162 and 0. Let's have ourselves a yes, season, sir. folks. Thank you, Sports Interaction, again. We will talk to you guys Sunday night with Zoobs and YJs on the podcast. I'm excited for that to hear what their reaction is. And uh, let's have a fucking season, folks. Love you guys, man. Gate 14 forever. We'll talk to you guys Sunday.